How's it going? I'm Bobby Fry. I've been asked to put together a YouTube on transitions in a triathlon. I have done three full Ironmans, uh, several halves, several Olympics, and several sprints. So the one thing I actually do enjoy is uh, speeding through transitions. And I figured why not host a transition workshop in a transition. I'm at the Coeur d'Alene 2022 Half Ironman 70.3 race and I'm actually inside transition. As you can see behind me, there is a lot of bikes, a lot of racks, and it can be a little over overwhelming. However, it doesn't have to be, it can be pretty simple. So I wanna cover a couple things. As you can see, everybody's bikes and how they have a rack. Some are a little different because of their seat styles but we have the gentleman with his handlebars and then we have somebody with their seat on the rack. But as you can see, they're in different directions because of the way the numbers are. So if you're 59, if you're 57, and on the other side is 58. So just to cover a couple things here, when you're coming into transition, the biggest thing is remembering where you are. If you notice, all of these bike racks, they're when you're in race, you're not necessarily going to remember where you're at. So familiarize yourself. If you happen to be by a tree, or if you're the last one, or when you're coming down, if you count count each bike rack and have that in your head, that will get you closer. Because when this fills up, they're all going to look the same. As you can see over here, when you start getting in, if you look at that angle, and you're in your race mode, it's all gonna look exactly the same. So familiarize yourself. Also, as you see, everybody's coming through here. Know where your swim in is, where your bike out is, and where your bike in is, and where your bike, where your run in is. So I don't know the layout of this, but this would probably be where the bike is, is coming in when you get off, or it could be where the bike is, is coming out. So make sure you, you talk with a volunteer and ask them. Then practice it. I'm on a relay. This is where he's got his bike. The other thing too is, is that he's um, little, put a little bit of air out of his tire because it's hot. It's gonna be here all day long and it might pop. It has been notorious for people and 90 degree weather and you don't have your tire loose or you don't have air out of your tire that it might pop the other thing is and i'll cover this tomorrow this bike right here in this space right here that's your real estate that is how much space you're going to have to put all of your stuff we'll cover that tomorrow when we have a little bit more time but for now i just wanted to give you a glimpse of what a transition would look like and we'll cover more as we head on out. Welcome to my backyard. Uh, here's my makeshift transition area. Uh, this is a basic video on transitions for triathlon and I'm just going to cover the, the necessities. There's quite a bit of uh, nuances that, that you can personally do yourself as you get more comfortable but for now I'm going to cover the basics. And within that, the three different disciplines, each, each of them have their own equipment that you absolutely have to have for your race, or honestly, you cannot compete. Uh, starting with the swim, the bike, and the run, I'm gonna cover the absolutes, and then I'll show you a little bit more of things that will make you comfortable. And that's pretty much how I antiquated, is you have 
the necessities that you have to have to do the race, and then everything else is just things that make you comfortable. It could be a piece of gum, it could be a certain pair of sunglasses, or what have you. However, what I have actually laid out in front of me is your requirements. So, we'll start with the swim. As far as the absolutes that you have to have to be able to start your race is a swim cap, normally assigned to you from the race. It could be a different color for, for a certain group that you're in, or uh, it could be, depending on how big the race is, uh, all one color. Uh, so this is a requirement, and it usually required uh, a, so that they can identify who's in the race uh, if you're going out of the course however this is a this is a requirement uh, goggles goggles are, are 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 not necessarily a requirement however you're gonna have a tough time if you don't have goggles uh it could be done without them uh, some things happen out there uh, you get them kicked off you forget your goggles it can be done, it won't be comfortable, but it can be done. Wetsuit, depending on if the race is wetsuit legal or not, due to water temperatures, it's not necessarily a requirement. Uh, however, if it is below a certain degrees, they, they may encourage that. But as far as the wetsuit, the wetsuit is not a requirement in most races. Uh, a lot of people wear them for comfortability. A lot of people wear them because it's a, lot, it's a lot more buoyant. Okay, moving on from the swim to the bike. So what is required on the bike is your helmet and your race number. You could either get it on a race belt or you can also have it pinned onto your kit or what other clothing you're wearing but your race number is a requirement uh, typically is put on when you're getting ready for the bike uh, however you can also pin it to yourself before you put your wetsuit on or you can have it on before you put your wetsuit on so either way that is a requirement your helmet your helmet is a requirement as well and it has to be on and strapped before you leave your transition. Shoes, shoes honestly are not a requirement. Uh, however, it could be very uncomfortable if you just have normal shoes, um, then, uh, then your clip-ons, or if you're pedaling just without clip-ons, your just normal shoes will work just as well. So more importantly, the helmet and your bib number for the run the only requirement on the run again is your race number shoes are very ideal however your 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 race your race number is a requirement no matter what you lose a shoe you can still do the race if you have your bib not that i would want to do that I just want to cover your real estate in the transition area. So as you can see, I have my bike mounted here and I have my shoes here. So your typical real estate area is the width of your handlebar. And down here you can see how I have this out. And a lot of times when you're getting your transition set up, everything will be in this little area here your wetsuit you'll be getting that on so you're not necessarily going to have to worry about the wetsuit but as far as your transition area this is this is about how much you're going to have this is you're going to be your real estate so everything that you pack um, should ultimately be confined within this area along with your neighbor and so forth as you saw in the Iron Man transition you get pretty tight and you get pretty packed in pretty quickly so less is more as far as transition that's that's really basic and, and that's pretty much it you could you could do a full triathlon with everything that's right here the rest of everything is just how comfortable you want to be out there or how comfortable or what you've trained with or 
uh, the fuel and everything else but honestly uh, for your first sprint uh, this is ideally just how you want it set up <laughs> 